So now we are going to look at some well-known classical problems in the field of graph theory and these problems give uh, some idea of how graph theory is used in various applications. And the first uh, in this set of problems is the uh, Konigsberg bridges problem. It was a long-standing issue which was solved by Leonard Euler in 1736 and the solution turned out to be the first paper ever in the field of graph theory and this marked the creation of new field in pure mathematics it came about to have profound impact on various sciences physical sociolo sociological biological computational theory engineering and so on and so forth so the basic problem actually refers to some islands situated situated along the Pregel river in the city of konigsberg in russia and these islands, you can have them visually over here as A, B, C, and D. These islands are actually interconnected with one another using seven bridges. And the problem is basically to start at any of the four islands and walk or traverse over the bridges once and only once. In fact, if we start by choosing any of the island and try to visualize a path uh, going across each of the bridges we will find out eventually that one bridge or one edge is going to be left out in any case and this could be um, it, 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 it does not depend upon the starting vertices so for example if we start in the middle over here we could come out with another set of paths which basically go through all of the uh, edges available to it and at the end of the day we will find out that one edge is still left out and one of the first thing which you will notice over here uh, is that if you consider the edges which are incident upon each vertex uh, if you count these edges we will find out that they are actually odd in number. So this is 5 and this is 3. So basically all of the vertices are of odd degree. Uh, is this meaningful? Euler suggests that it is. So what would happen if the graph were supposed to be even? We could, we could, we could try it out. So in this case, uh, we insert two edges and now the graph is entirely comprising of even degree vertices. And if we now make a way across this graph, we will be able to see that a path exists. So coming down here. And there you go. We have just been able to solve um, the graph uh, on the basis of entirely even degree vertices. But there's also one more hidden cache to it. So for example, if I go back and undo the addition of the uh, different edges and suppose that I only embedded one edge. So in this case, you will notice that uh, I am left with the uh, two vertices comprising of five and three degrees and the remainder ones are now all even degree vertices so two odd and two even and in this case if i was supposed to start a traversion process let's have a look and in this scenario I did found a solution but if you notice the solution started here at vertex C and ended here at vertex B and this graph is different because it seems to be a kind of a mixture and in this case uh, it comprised of two odd degree vertices and the rest are even degree vertices and this type of graph is basically known as a universal graph. So we have some possibilities over here in the sense that if our graph, sorry, if we look at our problem, 
our solution basically exists if a graph comprises of all even degrees uh, the, such kind of graphs are basically called as Euler graphs and if uh, there are two odd uh, uh, degrees then in that case uh, the graph is basically called as unicursal and a solution in these cases exists and no solution there is actually no solution if the graph comprises of all odd degrees or if the number of odd degrees are basically greater than 2 uh, so that is also a scenario where a solution will not exist so this was actually proposed by Euler but the important point is that why is this behaving like this so the behavior can be understood by um, considering that all of our vertices in the graph they are distributed amongst two sets A and B so we may have these uh, uh, vertices over here and maybe perhaps these vertices so any number of vertices over here and um, if you start uh, over here in one of these sets and traverse some of the paths amongst the vertices over here so this, this could be a partial traversal or a full traversal the idea is that if you are going to move from this direction to this direction uh, and then you consider navigating through the different uh, vertices over here if you are going to come back to the set A again you will notice that you need two edges over here in order to be able to come back if this was not the case if this was just one edge you will find out that you are basically left out with a disconnected graph and that would imply that in order for the graph not to be disconnected you must have two edges over here why does this work in the unicursal case well in the unicursal case this works because you have to start you have to ensure that one of the odd vertices belongs to a and the other uh, odd vertice also belongs to A so you basically end over here in fact even in a unicursal graph if you basically start with an even vertice over here you will not find a solution you must make sure that you start at an odd vertex and you end at an odd vertex in that case a solution is possible so basically uh, in the next few moments I'm going to explain to you an algorithm which exactly follows this principle and uh, on the basis of that uh, we can basically link up algorithms with different types of problems and with that we can get some solutions so now uh, considering how this problem could be addressed by means of an algorithm uh, we could basically uh, look at a simpler graph so let me adjust the screen size a little bit so uh, suppose I have a graph uh, in this order called uh, a b c so of course these are basically uh, interconnected with one another followed by uh, d and e so apologize for the uh, misaligned edges we could represent this uh, graph by means of an object called G comprising of uh, two entities the first one is the set of vertices and the second one is the set of edges V is comprising of A B C D and E whereas E is comprising of uh, the edges AC, uh, AB, we have BC, we have DE, followed by uh, uh, which one is left out? BD, uh, CE, CD, and um, BE. So this is the two sets representing this graph. And we can also consider maybe uh, uh, another uh, uh, empty graph comprising of the same 
uh, object so basically the idea later on you will see is that we are going to slowly go through the uh, edges identified in the graph G and bring them across to this new graph called G bar comprising of the set V bar and E bar where uh, the V bar at the moment consists of A, B, C, D and E and E bar initially uh, is basically a null graph there are no edges inside this 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 uh, graph so um, now uh, we are going to start working on the algorithm but you will re recall that um, uh, when we were discussing the problem we, 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 we mentioned that the solution will only exist if the uh, graph is Euler comprising of all E1 degree vertices or uh, maybe the graph is universal where um, the, the, the number of degrees are exactly two so we need to have a kind of a pre-processing step in which we have to count uh, the degree of all vertices and uh, if uh, the uh, return from this pre-processing step is true we should move ahead and implement our actual algorithm uh, otherwise uh, the algorithm will be stuck and it will not be able to give us a solution so we we can basically make uh, this pre-processing step um, by okay so since we have to look at all of the uh, what is this? We need to basically go through the count uh, of the number of times an odd degree vertex is going to appear uh, during the pre-processing step and then we basically look at for all what is this vi belonging to the set v. So basically we are going to go through the uh, set over here and for each of the vertices vi which are found inside this this set uh, v we basically have to get the degree of that particular vertex so uh, this Im implies that there is a kind of an operation uh, which is going to be taking place over here and this could be represented in many different forms the most simplest one could be is that we have to uh, consider that the vertex A is repeated how many times in the list of edges over here so basically the number of times uh, it appears over here will suggest to us the uh, presence of a degree 2 for the vertex A but there can of course be other methods uh, later on in the course you will come across them so at the moment it's not of our concern but we just assume that we have a um, a procedure called get degree and of course since it has to go through all of the edges over here we could imply that the procedure is going to spend around a complexity of uh, o of order e um, uh, as uh, the time uh, it will take to search through this set e in order to find the degree for us and uh, once we get this this de this degree quantity we have to then basically check if it is an odd quantity or an even quantity so if it is um, the modulus of the value d is uh, not equal to zero that implies that we have found a, an odd degree vertex and in that case we have to do count plus plus and from this count plus plus uh, we have to now stop if the count value is greater than 2 so the first time it is 0 count 1 2 so if the count value is greater than 2 we have to do a return false suggesting that we shouldn't basically um, execute the algorithm but if all goes well and the graph uh, consists of uh, uh, even degree vertices and the count is basically uh, not an issue then in that case uh, we can simply return a true value 
upon the completion of this for loop. In fact, uh, maybe we can also modify this to consider the fact that maybe a count is greater than two or count is equal to, okay, no, 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 no. This, this has to be placed later on, I apologize. So we can come back over here and make another kind of check over here. So if the uh, uh, count value is exactly one, we should still return a false, else return a true. So this would be that pre-processing step, um, which, which is going to uh, uh, suggest to us whether we should move ahead and run an algorithm or not. So I'll put this aside for the moment. And assuming that this works, we can now proceed with uh, uh, developing our full-fledged algorithm. Let's move this aside a little bit. We can reshuffle this again later on. So for the algorithm, um, basically, we if 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 it is supposed to be a universal graph, then in that case we have to start with uh, a vertex of odd degree. And if uh, otherwise, if it is not a universal graph, we can basically start uh, in any and by by any of the vertices. So basically. We can identify this in the form of u uh, as the starting vertex. So the starting vertex from the set v. So from amongst these, we have to make 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 a start in this case. And remember that this this is again a function which is going to return to us different values. So for example, if the graph is uh, uh, even, in that case any random vertex will will do but if the case if it is the universal graph then we need to return only one of the vertices either d or e so in that case any uh, odd vertex that will have to be basically returned so this is something um, which is happening uh, inside this this routine but once we do get the value of u, we have to keep on uh, looking at the possibility of choosing an edge as a candidate and moving that edge from here to this graph over here. So for that, basically, we need to run a while loop uh, where you look at the size of the set E over here. So while the size of set E is not equal to zero, we have to retrieve all of the uh, neighbors, get neighbors for the vertex u, which has just been identified. So as an example, if we have the case of u is equal to d as the starting point, in that case, then the vertices, uh, sorry, the, the neighbors of this uh, e, uh, d are going to be b, e, and c. So these will have to be comprised inside this set object n, and then we move forward from amongst this 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 set which which has just been obtained. We have to choose a random vertex w, uh, randomly selected from the set n, and we need to place a kind of a constraint. So I'll come back to this constraint later on. Uh, the idea is that once we have identified a random vertex uh, from here, so for example, suppose we have identified E over here, that would imply we just have a pair DE. And this DE needs to be removed from here, and it needs to be embedded inside DE. Uh, in, uh, this has to be embedded inside the graph G bar uh, over here. So for that, for that matter, we will need an operation called remove edge from the graph G and we have to remove basically the uh, edge pair U W and insert the same edge into G bar. Uh, so we have basically performed this kind of swap operation. 
okay and once the operation has been performed the while loop needs to be run again and in that case we have to specify a new u in that case we have to specify the ending point of this uh, edge over here as the new u and then uh, to avoid an issue we have to basically uh, look through the uh, set of vertices over here and if there is uh, no incident edge uh, sorry there's no incident edge in graph G for the vertex W that means we can simply get rid of that vertex uh, from the graph G so this is a kind of a check which is going to ensure that eventually the 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 graph G becomes empty with respect to the uh, uh, edges as well as the the set of vertices so let me readjust this a little bit uh, this is a little bit messy okay now this is fine so the uh, while loop ends over here and regarding the constraint uh, the constraint actually has to basically check whether the W is suitable or not so let me give you an example scenario suppose we take the case of BE and then from that BE would imply that this graph is removed and then we choose the next edge as CE and then we choose the next edge as CB and if following that the, 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 the next candidate edge to traverse is BE you will notice that it will not be possible to go from E to any of the other vertices. So this rep represents that that concept of a disconnected graph, which we which which, which we talked about. So we need to prevent the uh, edge B E for being formed. So I'm going to come back and embed all of the edges again, and this time we're going to design a constraint, and the constraint is going to look like this. If the size of n is not equal to 1 so if n comprises of only one what is this that means we don't have any option we have to choose it uh, and in addition uh, in addition to this we basically say if uh, the removal of the edge so if it is resulting in uh, the graph G if the edges are removed from the set E if at the end of the day the graph is disconnected that means we have to basically choose uh, another random n from from the list of n so that would imply that uh, this algorithm will keep on working I apologize uh, okay, maybe I can choose a straight line like this that's better and in this case and while this would be our algorithm to return to us a vertex so let's let's do a quick walkthrough uh, let's do a quick walkthrough of how this algorithm is going to come up with a solution or rather a feasible solution so for the solution uh, basically we can represent a kind of a state representation of each of the variables which are which are playing a role inside this algorithm so basically we suppose that we start at the uh, the first case where the uh, we choose the vertex set d uh, we choose the vertex d from the uh, from the from from amongst the vertex set b and from D uh, we proceed inside to uh, line number one and in this case uh, the set of uh, neighbors for D are going to be returned as B E and C and from amongst this we can suppose just for argument sake that the W is returned as E over here and in that case this 
condition is going to be false so it's going to continue with removing an edge and inserting the edge so basically this edge is going to be removed from here and it's going to be embedded inside DE and at this line over here uh, we are going to replace the U as W so in that case the U is now becoming E in this case and this is going to start another iteration of the while loop it's going to come to line number one okay this one is meaningless but it will come to this one over here and it will again return a list of neighbors in this case the list of neighbors are going to be b and c and just for argument's sake with that we choose randomly c from here so in that case it's going to remove uh, the uh, edge c e from here and instead embed it into this graph g bar over here and again the u value is updated so c is going to come over here and from c we have a list of options so we have a b and d as a list of options a b and d are the list of options and just for argument sake again that we have this w is equal to random n and for in that matter b is going to be selected so that would imply that we have to remove b c and embed it inside this uh, graph G bar and this is that point which I was talking about in which we have to look at this constraint so now I the, the the value is now uh, updated u is equal to B and the neighbors of B are basically a e and D a e and D so a e and D and now supposing if e is selected that would imply that the removal of edge uh, be from e so that would imply that if i if i if i remove this edge be from the list of edges my graph is going to become disconnected and that would imply that if it is disconnected i have to choose another vertex and this would imply that the other vertex will have to be either from a or it has to be D but not E so this means that this is cancelled out we don't want this so supposing that in that case uh, it's basically uh, uh, in, 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 in the eventuality that let's suppose for argument sake that the uh, next vertex is D so D is the candidate let me change the font color it would imply that BD is going to be removed from here and that BD is going to be embedded into the graph G bar D is going to come over here and now you'll notice that the neighbor set of D is exactly C so if the size of the n is not equal to 1 you will notice that in all of the remainder cases if we keep on removing the edges we are just left behind with with the with the vertex which which it started in the first place so in that case if we have C that would imply that random vertex chosen over here is C this would imply the removal of DC so DC is removed from here and embedded into the graph G bar and this check over here would now be in place so we will notice that since it is no longer part of any edge we can just simply remove it so this is because of this constraint over here so what we are left behind over here is that the new C is coming over here and in this case the neighbor of C are A okay and in this case A is going to be selected and AC is going to be removed from the list of vertices and it's going to be embedded over here and just like we removed the vertex D over here since C is no longer used we also have to erase this part and A is proceeding over here the neighbors of A are B and of course B is going to be selected so that would imply that the vertex the edge AB is going to be removed from here and it's going to be embedded inside here and the last step is going to be basically going for B also note that A has to be removed because it is no longer used and in the last case B is going to be selected the neighbors of B are E and in that case E selected so in that case uh, we can simply get rid of B E and embed it inside G bar over here 
that would imply that eventually the vertex B is gone and eventually E is gone and we have been able to obtain the uh, series of uh, insertions and deletions which which give us a valid path uh, for the for the for the problem and we have this solution and this solution uh, basically would be represented by removing this null and placing all of these pairs so the first one is going to be de followed by ec followed by cb you you will notice that basically i'm going through these series over here followed by bd and dc ca ab followed by b so there is a kind of a chain uh, type of movement which is taking place and this is basically giving us the solution to, 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 to our problem. And we can also do a complexity analysis for uh, this, this whole algorithm. So the, the idea behind the complexity analysis is that we have to look at each of these steps over here. So maybe I can change the font uh, to pink purple or pink I'm not sure so we can basically have a look over here this is going to be uh, a complexity of O of E considering the possibility that it has go, go through uh, V vertices and then of course this is going to be O of E and since we have to look at a list of neighbors uh, supposing that it's connected with everybody so at the worst case this is going to be O of E as well and uh, the, the, usually if you are going to look for the uh, connectivity of, uh, of a graph uh, uh, depth for such algorithm can be used and the complexity of that is around V plus E these two are O of 1 and um, since you are looking uh, to no incident edges over here that means you have to go towards each uh, of the edges inside the edge set E and this is going to be having a complexity of O of E over here. So the major part is that uh, we can we can check that the while loop and over here all of the terms the O of E, V plus E, O of 1, O E that basically represents that we have this kind of O of V complexity for this this line plus O of E square for the complexity uh, inside this while loop and of course amongst this the dominant complexity is that of O of E square so the algorithm uh, in this case is basically uh, giving us a complexity of e O of E square.